we will start, uh, we will briefly recap what we did last time with a little extra things here and there. So, basic idea is that you know statistical mechanics has two parts, one is equilibrium statistical mechanics that addresses problems like uh, phase transition and uh, properties of matter and then you have the time dependent statistical mechanics which addresses things like chemical kinetics, details of protein folding that is the dynamics of protein folding and things like that. These are very complex systems and as I try to explain that there is a huge amount of work that gone into it. in chemistry, theoretical chemistry only quantum we really do not do quantum in any kind of sophisticated way. We do density functional theory and that kind of thing, nothing against it because people who have uh, developed them are physicists and they are very smart people. In statistical mechanics, however, starting with uh, many people like Onsagar, Karkut, Zwanzik and others, there is a considerable contribution that has gone in from chemistry, physical chemists. Of course, physical chemistry as you know was born essentially 1900 or 1901 around that with the event of uh, Arrhenius uh, and Ostwald. And what they did essentially was some form of other is the statistical mechanics. However, there is a history which I will recap again, but before that let me tell you what would be the first few things that preliminaries we did last class. Uh, I will just do 5 minutes recap of that because I want to, I like to put really heat on the head again and again on few points that I think important to the students and I get very upset when they do not understand. Now what I will do today probability of statistics. Then uh, I will explain why we need to know some amount of th very elementary to what you have learned by and large in your class 12, 11 or 12 um, and fundamental concepts actually what we will do here something like phase space trajectory and then I will I'll try to motivate and explain to you why this time dependent statistical mechanics, not sorry, equilibrium and time dependent statistical mechanics needed these things. So I hope to finish this today. So the Liouville theorem and Liouville equation will do these things and uh, this will be next, not in this thing. Then we will go on my very favorite and one of the most favorite is the fluctuations and response function. Then we will do, this is amazing, the ideal monotomic gas, but even the translation entropy is used almost every day in the drug discovery or drug DNA interaction because that gives you the entropy of a drug going into DNA and the entropy it is losing which is the sakut tetrad equation. Then of course here we have all the things that we need, you know, rotational, vibrational entropy, things we, uh, essential for chemical kinetics. We use them without knowing where they came from. But they came from a very elementary statistical mechanics. So, we will do that and then we will do bit of quantum statistics. I am not too greatly fond of doing this thing, but there are some nice points here that uh, I think students should know and they are not taught and are not covered in books, very simple things. Then we will go to Ising model, which I think is one of the model, simple model, the first and perhaps the only uh, solvable model of interacting systems and one must know as the model and this is the uh, A of the uh, uh, the chronology and the of my doing. Now uh, what I was uh, briefly tell the, the hierarchy, the way things happened in statistical mechanics, the way it was evolved, I did, is it started with Maxwell who did the out of uh, the velocity distribution that was the first uh, step and then Boltzmann, Ludwig Boltzmann who uh, was as I told you so impressed that rest of his life he carried this paper of Maxwell with him and he is the one, so this is the chronology. 
he is the one who started uh, very seriously introducing concepts of probability theory, which was enormously criticized because those days everybody believed the mechanical, mechanical law of motion will be able to explain everything. And Boltzmann introduced many, many things. One of them is the Boltzmann, uh, we, uh, you know, Boltzmann kinetic equation where he tried to develop. So, Maxwell gave uh, the, uh, these Maxwell and then a little bit of Boltzmann was able to, this one, all these things came out from then your uh, P one third M N C square C V 3 by 2 RT, then expressions for viscosity that I forget but something to do with density and other things, sigma cube. So, all these things, huge number of things flew from this equation. So, the uh, beginning uh, birth of kinetic theory of gases started with Maxwell and that was also the start of the statistical mechanics. But Maxwell and Boltzmann could connect to thermodynamics, but at the same time get the expressions like this which are transport properties. And as you know, they also this approach also gave the universal gas constant which ultimately also used by many people including Einstein to get the estimate of Avogadro number, one of the landmark of Einstein's 1905 paper. Boltzmann wanted to go beyond this ideal gas, collisionless ideal gas. He introduced then this binary collision and binary collision operator, which even today is used. But in the process, he is had to introduce essentially many body distribution function because the probability of a particle at R1 V1 colliding with a guy, another particle R2 V2 and then going off R1 prime V1 prime R2 plus V2 prime. This is a hugely complicated thing because these are three dimensional vectors. So, he made an approximation that if R1 V1 R2 V2 F that is F2 that becomes F1 R1 V1 and F1 R2 V2 that is called the approximation of molecular chaos by and large for which he was criticized. But then uh, what, what came out of, of, of Boltzmann's rigorous work is the definition of entropy S equal to kln uh, omega and that ultimately lead to the you know very heavily used by uh, Gibbs. Okay. So, uh, then around that time we had van der Waals and as I told you last day the van der Waals had this famous van der Waals equation of state and uh, which has this kind of sh unphysical shape but P versus density and uh, Maxwell did the Maxwell tie line construction. This work and this work we motivated the uh, person across the Atlantic. Willard Gibbs, who made uh, this uh, important, he could uh, observation that he, look, he, he of course knew all of Boltzmann. He knew this the difficulty Boltzmann suffered in order to do a Newtonian uh, description. That means the everything obeys laws of conservation, Newton's laws of mechanics, and then of course, as I told you, we cannot even solve three-body problem. Willard Gibbs then realize that there could be a time independent because if we have to solve this Avogadro number because you know we are interested in 1 cc at least or 2 cc then th those very molecules you cannot solve in 3 body and even have spheres and forget about water or astronaut trial. So, he realized very early the time dependent approach of Boltzmann is not going to go very far if I am doing the equilibrium properties because for equilibrium properties it should not be that difficult. 
Uh, after all, as I told you yesterday that we have millions of glasses of water, they are all the same properties. Then he realized one very important thing which I forgot to tell uh, last time. He realized that in such a system, of, I forgot the number of, they have a huge number of microscopic states. And if I have billions and billions of um, my glass half full of water, then each of them will be in different microscopic states. And since each of them in different microscopic state at any given instant and exploring other microscopic states, it makes sense to talk of a distribution. And uh, distribution that is why I introduced the concept of ensemble which I will elaborate a little bit more because these things are not, other than I, the book of Tolman, I have not seen anybody doing a really good job on describing these things. But Tolman of course goes uh, a little old fashioned and goes different things. So, then the Willard Gibbs, we do not need anything beyond Willard Gibbs as of now. Willard Gibbs explained how to think of Van der Waals. He explained the phase equilibrium, the famous book of uh, thermodynamics of heterogeneous system and uh, they were uh, extremely impressed Maxwell. Of course, Boltzmann was going his time dependent uh, venture and uh, when Maxwell died at a very young age, we'll, everybody, the joke was Willard Gibbs was unmarried, uh, lived uh, in the Starling laboratory at Yale and he used to, only thing he used to take is to uh, journey from his home to the second floor. But of course, before that three years he spent in Europe after that where he learned all these things. Uh, and when Maxwell died, then the joke at Yale was that there was only one man who understood Gibbs and he's dead. So, but he alone kind of went on doing and did many, many things. Okay. Now coming back. So, they, he introduced all them, uh, these three, one, two, four, introduced the concept of probability. And now I'll briefly go through, not wasting too much time to what and you know there are enormous number of jokes about uh, probability theory and many many poetries and poems of probability and this is my favorite of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, so now I will go through but before that let me tell that we have uh, this, this is my favorite book. Uh, this is not the book I have in mind, my, I told my student to put this uh, figure together but an introduction to probability theory by Kai Lai Chung. It is famous in uh, a uh, mathematics department by KLC. So, they have two KLC, KLC 1 introduction to uh, that is a wonderful book which I studied uh, when I when they took a course on probability theory and this is the one absolutely fantastic which I many help I got when I solved the barrierless the reaction which is, 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 is a really uh, quite a significant and is a classic now. I, I could do that because I knew how to solve method of images, by method of images and repeated reflections, all this technique I knew that I could solve that. And this is another beautiful book which is an introduction. This I think all of them are available free on the internet. Uh, and, but this is beautiful because it uh, thinks of uh, talks of probability determinism, then uh, probability and deterministic together goes on deriving beautiful equations. So, these are highly recommended. So, these three books for the probability theory that I recommend to everybody. So, this particular part of the lecture will now will be uh, motivation I have already done, little bit more, then I will go through what is a random variable. How do we define sample space which is so important in uh, when you do the statistical mechanics, then probability distribution and the conditional probability this is extremely important because conditional probability is the one that goes over to become the radial distribution function. So, this conditional probability you have heard and read in I think and Bayesian's theorem things like that in your undergraduate in your uh, class 12, but that is the same thing we uh, uh, again and again we come. Then we will do central limit theorem. As the name says, mathematicians are not given to adjectives, not like chemists. We do not, we say everything very interesting. They hardly say anything interesting. They say it is trivial. Hmm. Feynman has a wonderful joke about mathematicians. 
okay. So, as I said what is the motivation is that in statistical mechanics one is interested in large macroscopic systems with many many degrees of freedom not several degrees of freedom, many many degrees of freedom. One cc of liquid water contains these many molecules and each has 9 degrees of freedom. So, we are dealing with huge number. So, if we want to have a Newtonian description of solving positions and momentum of each particle, not only that we won't be able to do it, even in computers we are doing about it uh, now probably few thousand, even then we need the same concepts that we will be using. Also if we have all those things, we have no need for that. Uh, it is not necessary to have all this uh, huge, huge, uh, when we have started doing that, we could hardly uh, simulate few hundred water molecules or few hundred uh, layer zones. So, we are little bit more elaborate in describing, but now computer simulation has come a long way. So, so now this is a very important and very loaded statement and that we no longer can afford and no longer it is realistic or practical to take a deterministic approach, which is Newtonian approach. Instead, we have to go to probabilistic approach which was already initiated by Maxwell was the first thing would it the single particle distribution. Now there is a very very important point that comes now that what the, 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 the experimental observables that we do for example specific heat or the density they are all averages over a, a random variables. They, they, if you look for example the standard uh, um, edit Castellan book if you remember has this uh, nice picture that how to get the pressure of a liquid and what Castellan did was that he had uh, a colored thing and you know it is full of water. Now, um, so water up to this and then water up to this is a color liquid what is now given that if you now with a uh, microscope the optical microscope ordinary microscope do that we have in our uh, undergraduate or laboratories you will find that height is continuously fluctuating. So, there is nothing really a constant pressure and the pressure that we mean is we do an average over that and it is a time average. Okay. So, this is a very important point in understanding that experimental observables are themselves a random number and of course, when you do spectroscopy, you get a broad distribution that because the probe which say dye molecule you put in a liquid and then this dye molecule faces the, uh, okay. when you put a dye molecule say 0.1 molar or 0 0.01 molar. So, there is a 10 to the power 20 uh, uh, dye molecules, each of them facing a different uh, environment. So, what we see in spectroscopy is an average again over all these uh, molecules. Now, I will quickly go through something, I am just using this slide, I do not need to use that, but it is a little bit, it saves time and it is a little bit uh, more uh, precise. So, now we have to think when I start discussing the going towards the statistical mechanics. So, we have till now we have argued that we give out the deterministic approach of Newtonian dynamics, uh, Newtonian approach and we are trying to go to a probabilistic approach and the reason is that a deterministic approach is not feasible B that this the should be the matter of choice the probabilistic approach. And as I said, they are all fluctuating. So, then the central quantity in statistical mechanics is a random variable x. For example, h here is a random variable. Energy of a system in, in, in environment or in equilibrium with a bath is a uh, random system. So, is a random variable means we do not know and we will never know 
the exact instantaneous value of this quantity. But we know its average, we will know its second moment, if necessary we will know its fourth moment. But this quantity is a central quantity in our description of statistical mechanics. For example, you now realize that this random variable or set of random variable, I want a liquid uh, and a position of a water molecule in a liquid, then it will a position R orientation omega 1, then I would like to know another how far another water molecule with ori orientation omega 2 at position R2. So, in statistical mechanics, in chemistry, physics, all the time whether doing a conductivity, all the time we are talking with this quantity. So, this is a very general thing x can take the quantity of our interest. Some examples of random variable, when you throw a die, random variable is a number of one, okay. So, possible outcomes are this, there is one or six, each of them with one over six. Similarly, our, uh, so this is the die and this is the coin where each side head or tail will be half. Now, there are some things which immediately comes to our things like the way we do random walk, left or right if one dimension is like throwing up a die. So, distance traveled by different walkers of a given time interval, instantaneous pressure of a liquid as I said, number of nearest neighbor uh, in a liquid spherical molecules it is anywhere between 9 and 13. So, these are very important quantities, you want to discover random walk, you want to describe a walker. Uh, you how far it is moving, how fast it is moving, which is diffusion, you want the pressure, everywhere we are doing with this kind of random, which is the same as essentially throwing of a die or the um, or coin. So, random variable then let me summarize is a quantity of interest which can take a number of values which are not predetermined but which follows a distribution as we will go through. Now, the collection of all the outcomes of the experiment is the sample space, this is very important. So, when we do in statistical mechanics, we integrate over some dx or something, we integrate over all the possible values and all the possible values together define the sample space, okay. Like sample space of a, uh, a, uh, a coin tossed is head or tail is 2. Then you go twice, the sample space become 4 because it can be head, 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 tail, head, tail. Same thing, coin test, this is the then the total weight of the sample space. Similarly, dice, if we throw many times, then we have if twice, we have the 36 possibilities. So, then sample space which you have done in your, in your school like Venn diagram and similar things, it just the collection of possible events. We need to know the collection of all the events because we would need to know the total sample space in order to define probability of a given event. So, we need all the events to know. Once we have all the events, then now we can say okay, if I have a value that the probability that a variable has value in a continuous case between x and x plus dx px. Now, in, uh, in, a, in a discrete is easy as we say in a die it will be 1 over 6 that if what is the probability that it has value 1, it is 1 over 6. In a continuum, you need the measure between x and dx. If it is a uniform distribution, then it will be the length dx by the uh, a total L that will be and it will be normalized because you integrate, you get dx equal to L. So, these are fairly trivial things, uh, uh, straightforward things, but one it gets a little bit more difficult, uh, bit, uh, more elite later. We describe the probability and outcome to a value between x and dx by px dx. This is normalized so that it has to be somewhere and that is now again the distribution it will be you can do minus L to plus L. There are many many examples of that as I told you very first one was given by 
a Maxwell and you have to realize that it came from nowhere. Uh, that means at that time nobody in 1950 or 60, 1850 or 60, nobody talked of probability distribution except mathematicians, but they are not applied to physics or chemistry. So this was done by A and he derived it and the derivation is you have done in your undergraduate textbook how you get this particular form. This is normalized because in 1D for example, it have velocity can go to minus infinity to plus infinity and this is normalization constant. This average velocity we know will go to 0, but then you have the square which gives the uh, width which again is related to temperature and the derivation of many things of kinetic theory of gases, almost everything in the elementary kinetic theory of gases uh, flows from this equation. 